Good evening. Today is Wednesday, April 4th, 2013, and you're watching the Jessa channel on YouTube. I'm Jessa, and today I am here with episode 3, part 1 of my hood creation tutorial for Sims 2. This is the tutorial in which I am going to teach you how to make an aisle that looks like Akinthop Isle. So first of all, let me show you some pictures of Akinthop Isle. I have them up here. This is the top-down view of Akinthop Isle. And you can see uh, the hood shape and design here. You can see the island shape. And over here, just jutting up against the edge of the map, is the mainland. I'll show you some other pictures here of Akinthop. I'm going to show you in this series of tutorials how to get a look like this, how to get tightly packed small streets so that you can have a more natural look to your hood. I'm going to show you how to do waterfalls, bridges, hood decorations. I'm going to show you how to get your houses so that you look, houses look more natural when they all have a similar look. If you think about it, when people build houses, at least in the earlier days before we had a lot of transportation, people would build houses that all looked similar. That's why you have villages, you know, uh, for example, in England, some of those wonderful tiny English villages that all have the same sort of stone because builders would build with what was available right there. That's one of the tricks that I use to get Akinthop to look so natural is how I, well, natural for a computer game, how I get the houses to all look the same is I even think about details of what rocks they would be using to build the houses for, to make brick. This is another view of uh, Akinthop. You have Akinthop Isle on the left and the mainland on the right. This is during the process of building. I wanted to show you some of the pictures as I was going along. Keep in mind that building your own hood can be something that can be done quickly, but if you want to do something with some real detail, it's going to take you some time. It took me three months to build Akinthop Isle. And I would just work on it a, a couple times each week. I wanted to show you this picture because this is uh, Akinthop Isle before I started placing homes. Um, I spent a lot of uh, time taking care to build a street layout that had a lot of opportunity to build little sub-neighborhoods. You'll see what I'm talking about. This central square here in the middle is where I had, I had always designed it so that there would be a central uh, commons or community square and that's what this area is for. Uh, I had worked out which areas of town were going to be on the map. I'll show you more about that. This is Akinthop Isle as I have been building it going along for a while here. And you can see how it's starting to fill out. How I was beginning to place houses and flesh out the, the world. Another view of Akinthop. Once again, this is Akinthop Isle on the uh, left-hand side of the map. So for this part of the map, I wanted the Isle to be more colorful than the mainland. Um, the mainland has a uh, darker brick. The Isle has lighter colors, more clapboard, more wood, so that it gave more of a cheerful island feel. This picture shows uh, more of the different districts um, of the island, and you'll see here right here where my mouse is going is the uh, Central Park area that I was talking about. I use a combination of hood decorations and lots to create the look that I was going for. Another view of Akinthop from the back looking towards uh, the uh, waterfall here in the back. Um, and we're back to the beginning here and the overview of Akinthop. So without further ado, let's get to I'm going to resize my camera here to full screen and bring this up here and minimize this and take you into SimCity 4. Now, um, the important thing to note about building a hood, 
the only way that you can make your own map, your own terrain, as I have done with Akinthop Isle, the only way that that can be done is in SimCity 4. Luckily, SimCity 4 is available for a reasonable, a reasonable price on Amazon. Also, you can buy it on Steam. SimCity 4 with Rush Hour is not necessary. You can just use the basic SimCity 4 base game. So, once you've gotten your copy of SimCity 4 and you've installed it, you'll see a region that opens up for you. Uh, the first region that opens up, I believe, I want to say it's Timbuktu, but I'm not sure. Let's see. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So this is what you'll see when you first open up SimCity 4. The important thing to note is that there's different regions. These blocks all denote a region. For the sake of The Sims 2, you can only build with a small region. So the the Sims game will not set if you try and make a this into a a hood in Sims uh, in the Sims 2, it will not translate. You'll need to make this a hood. You could open this up and make this a hood, for example. Um, you could open up any of these smaller areas, like this one right here that I'm pointing at. You could open that up, terraform it a little bit, add some roads, and, and put that right into the Sims 2. And that would translate. But what I did was I made a custom region. I called it my testing region. And I made all my regions the same size so that they're all usable. Let me show you how I did that. Over here in your, I'm just going to find window here. Here we go. Over here in your My Documents, SimCity 4 regions folder you will find your all the names of the regions that you have made in the game or that have shipped with the game I've made two regions testing which I use to make Akinthop Isle and the Jessa channel tutorial which I'm using for this tutorial in the testing region there is a small file called config.bitmap. This is the file I'm talking about right here. I'm opening up this file in Earthen View, my picture to, uh, picture program. Uh, you can open it up in Paint and I'm going to include this file in the description box below for you to download it and put it right into your own region. In SimCity 4, the bitmap determines the size of the regions. Areas of the bitmap, and I'll show you what I mean by showing you another region. For example, let's go to Timbuktu, which we were just looking at, and scroll down to that config bitmap. And you can see that the areas that are red denote small regions, and the areas that are green or yellow or larger regions. All I did was fill in a file the right size with red, complete red, and that gave me all small regions. To save you the bother of doing that, as I said, I'm going to include that file. So that's that file here. Okay? And when you make your region, you're just going to want to copy that file over and uh, it replace the file that's in there, whatever config bitmap file you have in your region already. And uh, in your in your brand new region and you'll have all the right sizes in order to make your own hoods. Now let's go back to SimCity 4. I'm going to minimize this, maximize the screen again, and let's head over to SimCity 4 and show you a little bit more about what I mean about um, this is my testing hood region. This is where I made Akinthop. So I just picked the upper corner to work with because I knew I was only going to make one hood. It is possible if you are a SimCity 4 
uh, expert, of which I am not, I have seen players who have taken an entire region, for example, and terraformed the entire region, all of these squares being terraformed like we saw in Timbuktu, and then made basically an entire interconnected world. So they made their downtown, and this would be, for example, over here would be their mainland, and then over here might be one of their university, um, and over here might be a vacation world and a vacation world. And you can do that if you'd like to. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be the person to teach you how to do that because I don't really know how to do that, and it's more work than I'd want to do. I, When I designed Akinthop, which I'm going to open up for you now, When I designed Akinthop, my goal was because I don't have the strongest computer and I had played numerous hoods in which I had subhoods, university subhoods, vacation subhoods. Um, I wanted a hood in which I, everything that I needed would be in one hood. My downtown area would be in one hood my university area would be in one hood and all it would all be in the same hood because i am not fond of loading screens and that's one of the disadvantages of the sims 2 is the loading screens so now that you have gone in made your region and by the way let me go back out because i just remembered that i have forgotten to tell you how to make a uh, region the best way to make a region is to go here create new region and when you open when you do create the new region like I said you're gonna have various different sizes of um, uh, cities here these are cities and um, so you want to once again use my red config dot bitmap that's included in the description below to make your region be flat and all of the areas all of the cities the same small size so once you've made your region um, and you have put your config bitmap in, you can go on in and pick a city and start creating. Uh, but before I do that, like I said, let me show you Akinthop. So you can see that things look pretty different here than they do in um, The Sims 2. But that's okay because you'll get you'll get pretty used to it. If we zoom in here, you can see that this is the central square that I built. This is Akinthop Isle that I'm looking at right now. This is the university area. And I'm going to just flip on over here to the pictures that I had open for you. I'm going to pause for a minute while I pull that picture folder back up. So we're looking once again at the at the um, Akinthop map, and actually, let me see if I can find a slightly better picture for you to see what I was talking about with the Akinthop map. So I'm just going to roll scroll through here. Here we go. So this is the central area, and over here is my university area, and over here is the area where I'd always planned to have a train going through. I was very set on what I wanted to have in this hood. I wanted a train. That was very important. Uh, for me and I wanted the mainland and the island to be connected by train Going back over here to SimCity 4 you can see the central area here and you can see the university area here It looks very different But it does translate and as you build you'll begin to learn how it translates heading over here you can see the uh, this here is Sovereignty Isle which is Sovereignty Isle. Let's see if I can find a good quick good picture of it. Sovereignty Isle is right here. So, um, and this is where I had always intended there to be. I had always pictured there being one island kind of out in the middle that was connected by a bridge where my, you know, monarch or queen or, or whoever, my my most important sim, I wasn't sure if that would be a mayor or a governor or a monarch, would be in this area here. 
And I don't think I have a picture of Sovereignty Isle in this p bunch of pictures completed. Um, you can see just a little bit of it there. Right here. Um, but I'm scrolling through and I don't think I have one of those complete. I don't, but hold on one second. So this is a pretty good picture of Sovereignty Isle completed, uh, just a little bit here. And this is, of course, the castle uh, that I have here on the island. So that gives you an idea of what it looks like finished. And you can just see the road peeking, peeking through here. So heading back over to SimCity 4, you can see this is the main area of my downtown. And then over here is Dockside, which I had always intended to be kind of a warehousey place. One of the first things you'll notice is that the land is not even. But that's all right, because the only thing that you'd need to worry about in SimCity 4 is the basic layout of your world and the roads. Everything else, all of the fine tuning, is I have learned from experience is much easier to do in game. Um, one of the disadvantages about SimCity 4 is that it does not have an undo button. So it can be very painful <laughs> to, uh, to work with. So I'm going to go back over here to my Jessa channel tutorial and we're just going to get started on terraforming our own city. When opening your own city for the first time, you double click on it and it will say start new city and it will pop up. And then the first thing I do immediately is go down here and pause the simulation. This is named new city. A tip to avoid some hardship <laughs> is to go on ahead and go into mayor mode. What that will do is start your city out as a brand new city that you can name. When you name your city, it's saved in your folder, in your region folder. So if you make mistakes and the worst comes to worse, you can go back to the beginning or you can go back to your last save point. That's why it's important to name your city right off the bat. I'm going to name my city Tutorial City. And I'm going to establish the city. You'll see some fireworks going off which is just a neat little feature when you've established a city. Now you're in mayor mode. So the tools are limited for landscaping in mayor mode. It's important to be able to go back to God mode. The God mode tools have also limited themselves. They're not as many as were here just before. We want to go into full God mode. The way you do that is you use a sheet, a sheet, a cheat. <laughs> hold down the control key, the shift key, and the alt key, all three of them together, and then click on this sun. There they go. So I clicked on it to make it, I had to click on it twice. Uh, so you go there and there, and that brings all the regular God mode tools back. And then you can just go ahead and start terraforming to your heart's content. Let me show you the buttons. These are for building peaks or making the land go upwards. These are for making the land go downwards in different, um, I'm trying to think of the word, different uh, angles. This is for smoothing out the land. These are for putting trees on the land. Now I'm going to recommend immediately that you not put trees. If you do put trees down, those trees will translate over to SimCity, I mean over to, to the Sims 2. But, <laughs> but <laughs> you will find yourself in a whole mess of trouble because the trees that end up on your world in The Sims 2 in your hood are picked randomly from the tree category. Anything that's labeled as a tree can be put down in bunches. And if it's something that you don't want, it, you will end up having to sit there and minutely pick away every tree, delete every tree by hand. This is, this can take at least an hour or more. Very, very annoying. So don't put trees down in SimCity 4. This is for creating fauna, 
This is not anything that you will need. This is for adding horses, woodland animals, and wild animals. You'll never need that. Those don't translate over to SimCity, I mean over to The Sims 2. So here's our little world here. And I'm going to pause at this moment and stop the recording here at about 20 minutes, giving you an overview of SimCity 4 and what we're going to do in this tutorial series. And then I'm going to come back in episode part two of this tutorial series and start off with teaching you how I have learned, what I've learned about terraforming. And then we'll go on to part three, which will be roads. So I want to thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed what you have saw, what you've seen, <laughs> in this uh, first part, then please hit the thumbs up button below and encourage me. And if you loved what you saw, join the party and subscribe. And I'll see you in part two of this tutorial series in the next episode. Thanks so much, as always, for watching. Get every new Jessa Channel video right in your email inbox. Subscribe, then from your YouTube homepage, click Manage Subscriptions, then check Email with new uploads.